you're listening to a new season of Nest Level Digital. With an exciting lineup of speakers, we continue to reimagine the power of digital innovation. At Nestle, we're embracing the future. From creating innovative nutrition solutions to being a force for good, we bring you insights from around the globe on how we're having an impact and inspiring change. Discover how digital technologies help us create a better tomorrow. Hello, Vikrant Ban, Head of Analytics, Data and Integration at Nestle. Great to see you. How are you today? I am good, Victoria. Nice to see you as well. <laughs> nice to see you. It's been a while since we met. Usually we spend <laughs> quite a lot of time together in the office, uh, yes. but you've been very busy for some time. What have you been doing? Well, being in a role of heading analytics, data and integration, you ought to be busy because you're kind of solving lots of different challenges and problems for the business. So uh, that's what's been keeping me busy, essentially. Beautiful. Look, so we're here at the Nest level and I want to understand a little bit about, let's say, your choice of career, joining Nestle and so forth. So first of all, why did you join Nestle and tell us about how that happened? So when I started my career, I was in the consulting practice for a while and I had worked with some of the big CPG companies as part of that consulting stint, uh, Gillette, Cadbury, Schweppes and a few others. And then I really liked the domain quite a lot, the industry of CPG. It's very complicated, but at the same time, there's lots to learn. And uh, then I was always looking for, you know, what's the biggest out there? What's the biggest food company? What's the biggest CPG company? And here you are at Nestle. Uh, so... Um, the other thing also was I was looking for an international career and Nestle did give me that opportunity to be not just placed in one one location, you can actually have an international career. Hmm. So yeah, that's why here at Nestle. Beautiful. Tell me, for somebody who doesn't know, what does analytics data and integration really mean? What do you do in your job? Yeah, so um, essentially it's three things. Uh, we are responsible as a group within Nestle globally for all the enterprise analytics, AI, master data management, and integration platforms. We also manage the data fabric and the enterprise data landscape for Nestle, and also um, analytics products and services, which are using all of this data and the technology backbone to be creating value for a company is, is something that is a responsibility of our team as well. Now, we don't do this for every single business problem out there. We have a hub and spoke model within Nestle, but for everything that we do at scale, and that's what really I enjoy doing at Nestle, is we try to solve problems with that huge scale. Uh, that's the role of my team. <clears throat> Thank you. What's hub and spoke? So we have this uh, centralized group that is solving problems more uh, at a corporate level along with our group functions, our zones, our categories. And then we also have uh, within our each operating uh, concern or a market, what we call our geographies, because you know Nestle is out there in 180 different countries. We have uh, units that are working with that individual market or that individual country. And that's kind of the spoke. So if you think about it, we all work seamlessly together, but at the end of the day, it's a bit of a hub and spoke model. It's a hybrid data and operating, a data and analytics operating model. Cool, thank you. How many years have you been in the business? And how has the, let's say, world of data and analytics changed over that time? So I have been uh, in the business, I would say since 2004, uh, but within the data analytics space, I would say um, for maybe 15 years or more. Um, I, I have uh, seen that within at least Nestle, we used to have a lot of focus when it comes to data for decision making and for the transparency on our uh, key performance indicators. Uh, but a lot of focus of that used to be on internal data. Mm -hmm. I think what I've seen changes like, you know, there's been a lot more focus on external data, on observational data, you know, data that you start collecting from all the different ecosystems that are out there, also from things like machine sensors and so on. And now with AI, there is a lot more focus also on unstructured data that mm -hmm. is starting to emerge. Uh, so what that has done, and also the technology evolution that we see in the industry, thanks to our platform partners, is that we are able to solve some very complex problems. So what we say here at Nestle is we're able to uh, go from simple decisions to more better and faster decisions. So better being more complex decisions, 
faster, being like more real time and everything is kind of, you can look at it on the spot. Uh, the other thing is, data also plays a very important role in uh, being the bloodline of your entire enterprise, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, for example, Nestle now going for the e-commerce channel. So mm -hmm. you have to really think about how to connect all this channel-less commerce back to your back office operations. And data is your bloodline that's kind of connecting the entire enterprise there. And thirdly, I think I also see data becoming a bit of a currency of how do you work with your partners mm -hmm. outside in the industry, whether it's for sharing what you're doing with your suppliers or your partners from business perspective, or just creating what you call data ecosystems. Mm -hmm. um, I think data allows you to connect externally. So I think that's the evolution that I have seen within Nestle and I think generally mm -hmm. across the industry as well. Cool, thank you. So with all this data, internal, external, etc. How do you make sure that you've got access to the right data, that it's accessible in its right, in the right shape and form? Mm -hmm. I think that you've been doing some pretty important work in that space in, in recently. Absolutely. So uh, I think what we call here and generally is called in the industry is the data and analytics uh, strategy uh, or data strategies that are typically called. So um, in the last three or four years that I've been in this role, uh, working very closely with some very senior leaders in the organization, uh, especially under the sponsorship also of a CIO, who you might have seen a podcast of. Um, essentially, we uh, deliberated and worked on a strategy on how do we bring it all together. Mm -hmm. And I think there were three key pillars that we focused on. So the first was uh, we realized that in order to bring a lot of value from this data, we need to connect a lot of this data. We need to integrate a lot of this data. And in order to do that, we had to kind of group them logically into mm -hmm. what we call domains. Um, so we have actually identified 15 uh, uh, data domains uh, at the enterprise level, which we are mandating across the organization. So which means that we do bring that data once, but that can be used and reused and is interoperable uh, across the enterprise. So that's kind of one pillar that we have worked on. The second pillar is, uh, in order to do that, in order to bring that data together, you need to have some very common glue. And the glue is usually what we call master data. Mm -hmm. And we identified, again, some very common and critical master data within the company that we need to really mandate and govern very well. Mm -hmm. and, and that's kind of, again, something which we have deliberated and being part of our strategy. And lastly, I think it's for both of these entities is to govern it well. So the pillar on data governance, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is not just something that my team can do alone. We have to do this all as an enterprise. So it involves our group functions, it involves our zones, it involves our markets, it involves our categories, SPUs, all the different parts of our organization. We need to work together to bring that maturity. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So can you provide one example or two examples of where the data analytics have really influenced the decision or brought significant business value? Yeah, I mean, typically in our industry, uh, across the value chain, there are multiple and countless examples of uh, what you would call data analytics use. And a good, uh, let's say, reflection of that is that when we look at our portfolio in the last three or four years, I would say very proudly that close to around 85% of that portfolio is now enabled by data and analytics initiatives, right? So so that kind of gives you an idea that it's a very tricky one to just pick two. There are many, many countless examples across the business architecture. But I think a few which uh, you would typically see in an industry, and Nestle has benefited quite a lot from that as well, are the areas, for example, on revenue growth management, mm -hmm. uh, which we in the company call strategic revenue management. And they're looking at all the different analytics, which is used for uh, helping us through pricing analytics, our price pack architecture analytics, our promo mm -hmm. analytics. Uh, I think this is an area where we have actually helped the business uh, in very difficult times because there was a lot of external uh, factors that were impacting our business on this area to really give them the tools and the knowledge to be able to deal with that situation and actually create value through it. Mm. The second area I would say is uh, the whole uh, marketing uh, mm -hmm. side of things has transformed quite a lot, right? Many, many years back, we used to spend a lot of our marketing investment on uh, TV or radio or some of the traditional channels, but now it's very complicated. I mean, I'm sure this video will go out there on many of the digital channels, and that's what we see in our company more. Close to around 70% of the spend is now on digital. 
And I think in order to really get the maximum from it, you need to really optimize mm -hmm. how you manage all those channels. How do you uh, uh, spend that money that you are investing in uh, all the marketing uh, areas mm -hmm. in the best and the most optimal way? So another area of analytics which has really helped has been this area of marketing, uh, return on investment analytics. And, and the list goes on. I mean, if you can go to supply chain, there are transportation, logistics optimization. We have 300 plus factories in uh, Nestle. So we do a lot of uh, uh, asset and performance and energy optimization there. Mm. And also, we don't just use it for value generation. We also use it for purposeful uh, projects like sustainability. Yep. A lot of analytics has helped things like sustainability, our health star. Mm -hmm. uh, ambitions on our portfolio on being more nutritious. Mm -hmm. So there's been many, many areas where this has helped. So looking ahead, what are the advancements in your area that you're most excited about? Yeah, so um, I mean, obviously, uh, with the responsibilities that I said at the beginning, uh, there's a bit of a geek in me. So I always look forward to <laughs> what is uh, happening out there. And I think there's quite a few things that are really transforming, not just uh, us as a company, but generally the whole industry and generally the entire world, right? So there's been uh, a lot of uh, uh, focus on generative AI. And with that, when it comes to data, I think we used to talk a lot about structured data, but I think the focus now on unstructured data mm -hmm. is is going to be um, a key trend that we need to really go be good at. And, and if we don't do that well, we're not going to get the best value from our Gen AI capabilities. The other area is, uh, again, because of uh, factory footprint, uh, there's a lot of AI that is uh, kind of moving away from the cloud and going back to the edge. So mm -hmm. this whole space of digital twins on the edge, mm -hmm. which I think for oil and gas industry or some of the other industries has been kind of there for a while. I think for us as well, maturing in that space would be uh, one of the trends that we follow quite closely. Um, I would say um, the the topic of ecosystems of using data as a way of partnership and also bringing our industry together around the table yeah. and essentially uh, agreeing on open formats and cl basically helping each other mm -hmm. in solving common problems. Mm -hmm. I think that's a trend that I see happening. And I, I feel, and I think most of the tech giants have been talking about this, that this whole trend around agentic AI, where you will see more and more knowledge workers being augmented through multitude of agents. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is another trend that I think data and AI will absolutely be critical part of and, and will unlock a huge amount of productivity. Indeed, it sounds like you have some work to be done in the next years. Exactly, to the point of what you said at the beginning, why are you busy? So these are the things that keep me busy. Very good. So why would somebody consider joining, first of all, let's say, what, what's the, what's the best thing about your joining IT or more specifically Nestle IT? Mm -hmm. I think uh, the best part about joining uh, Nestle IT, I would say, and IT more broadly is, uh, I mean, this is the area if you see digital is evolving so quickly. Mm -hmm. So if learning is what kind of really pushes you and, and is something which motivates you, then I think being in IT is just amazing because mm -hmm. at this time, there are so many things that are changing and happening where the business actually rather than seeing IT as a service provider really sees IT as a trusted advisor. So I think if you are um, wanting to join IT, I think it's the best time to do so because you can actually enable a lot of the business by being that trusted advisor on the topic of all these advancements in digital. Specifically Nestle, I think um, when I compare to many of my peers in the industry and what I see elsewhere, I think the scale is the, mm -hmm. is the differentiator, right? Like uh, we do solve similar kind of problems, sometimes a little ahead, sometimes maybe benchmarking very close to the others. <clears throat> but I think uh, the scale at which we solve it, mm -hmm. being the biggest food company and, and having operations in 180 odd countries with 300 plus factories and all these big massive numbers, mm -hmm. I think that scale is what really um, I feel attracts, uh, attracted me and I'm sure would attract many people to work in Nestle even attracts me, actually. Yes, indeed. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so somebody who wants to pursue a career in, in IT, what would you advise them to do today? How to position themselves, etc.? I think the first and foremost is you need to specialize and ground yourself in a core discipline. Like there are many areas of IT which are kind of needing a lot of specialization. So data and AI being one. Mm -hmm. Uh, cyber security, uh, digital marketing. Uh, there are many, many areas which kind of uh, uh, are 
process optimization. So there are lots of areas where you can really ground yourself into the, the very strong core. Mm. But having said that, I think you, you have to be on that continuous uh, learning path, yeah. right? So the core is important, but you need to be always agile when it comes to your learning agility. And you need to be picking up newer skills. But on the softer skills side, I think that's becoming very important. The most important thing I feel is the business translation skill. And yes. people can call it business relationship management or uh, maybe different words. But at the end of the day, if you are an amazing technologist, but you cannot talk or interact with uh, mm. business folks, mm. sometimes in companies like ours where maybe the, they're not digitally native as well mm -hmm. um, in certain areas or say in certain uh, demography, so I think you have to essentially learn the art of, of doing so. I think that's a very important skill to have. Thank you. It's not tech for tech. It's not tech for tech. No. Absolutely. So you were talking about skills in IT in general, but if you look in your field specifically, ADI, mm -hmm. what are the profiles that you're looking for today? So there are a lot of profiles that we are always looking, uh, and, and please go on LinkedIn and check all the different jobs that we have within our area. But I think now, uh, typically, uh, the skills such as data engineering are very key. The skills like platform engineering and platform architects are very key. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, requirements for skills around the disciplines, various disciplines of AI, typically, uh, from machine learning engineers to AI engineers to uh, people who would help us with uh, ethics and uh, and all the different quality validation that we need to put in place for many of these. And, and then there are also roles like analysts and so on, which we still need to do because we have a lot of master data and, and the foundations that we have to uh, manage. So there's quite a lot of profiles and um, we'll be very happy for people to go and check them out and see if they can uh, join the Nestle bandwagon. One again. So thank you so much, Vikrant Bon. It was great to meet you, but before we say Hello and goodbye for today. Can you tell me what is your favorite Nestle product? Maybe one from here and one from your native country. Yeah, so I am natively from India and um, growing up, I have to say, uh, and I think this will not surprise many people from India, Maggie was my favorite, favorite product. Uh, I would say Milo as well uh, it was, was one of my favorite products. I think when I went to my college, I think Maggie was literally my staple. Uh, and I think that taste has stayed with me. I still, you ever, wherever, wherever I go in the world, I always have the Maggie sweet and sour sauce uh, somewhere in my kitchen cabinet. Um, but, you know, more recently, I have seen, um, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people with uh, diseases like cancer and so on. And I have seen uh, what really is a big challenge for them at that time is their nutritional uh, intake mm. because the appetite and other things are not there. So having seen up closely how a product like Nestle Health Science Resource really improves the life mm -hmm. of uh, those kind of patients who need that oncology care. Yeah. I, I think it's uh, really touched me a lot and I, I really hope that we can get that product to as many people as possible around the world because uh, it is really a product that makes a difference. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. This is Nest Level Digital. Thanks for tuning in. Discover our open roles on the Nestle Careers website. Stay connected by signing up to the Nestle Talent Network. Together, we can be future ready and make an impact today and for generations to come. See you on the next episode.